What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any videos that are posted every week. And also hit the bell notification so you're the first to hear about videos that I put out every week. In this video today, I'm going to talk about some of the crazy or extreme things I did to study while in medical school. For those who are unaware, uh, your four years in medical school are really challenging. Um, as a college student, say for instance, you're taking 12 to 15 credit hours per, per semester, and that is considered full time. Well, in medical school, a, those 12 to 15 hours that you're taking for that semester, it equates to about 35 to sometimes 40 credit hours in medical school. So it's a lot of information in a short amount of time that you're learning it. If you're taking a class or a course that lasts for four months in college, we do that same course in maybe like two weeks in medical school. So really fast paced, they expect you to know a lot of information and uh, regurgitate it for an exam. So, you know, knowing this, this kind of resulted in me kind of doing extreme things to learn information because um, you want to be successful, you want to match into a competitive specialty, and in order to do that, you have to do really well on your, your, your coursework, your clinical grades, as well as your step one, two, and three exams. For those who are unaware, step one is an eight hour exam that you take after your second year of medical school. And it is the most important test that you will take in your medical career because it dictates what type of doctor that you will be. So some of the things that I did <laughs> that were cr crazy and extreme. I guess the number one thing is that for a large portion of my medical school, and I'm not saying I did this every day or did it every week or for the whole time I was in medical school, but there was lots of time that I spent up to 18 hours a day studying uh, the material, trying to get ready for an exam, especially for step one. So that step one exam, you have six weeks to study for it. Most schools give you all for this and you sit at home and you're either in the library or you're at home for those six weeks. So you have off. So I sat there and I studied 18, up to 18 hours per day. And the way I did this was that I divided up my hour. Say for instance, I would study from 6 a.m. to 7 to 6.50 a.m. and then I would take a 10 minute break and then from 7 to 7.50 and then take a 10 minute break and I did that uh, for a number of weeks and I have a video about that and I'll put it right up here about more about that kind of process. I would say the next craziest thing that I did was um, in my apartment in medical school I had this big large wall that I had up in my kitchen and what I used to do to try to get down some of the pathways if we were taking biochemistry as a first year medical student or if we were taking like cell biology or you know some of the pharmacology so learning some of the pathways I would write on my wall so I just plastered the whole wall with uh, paper I bought this large piece of paper that you can buy from like Walmart or Kmart, Target, and I put I plastered the whole entire wall. It was a big wall kind of in my kitchen. And whenever there was something that I think, I thought that I would probably forget, I wrote it on the wall. So I wrote out pathways, I had oncology, you know, the different diseases and uh, like osteosarcoma is associated with RB gene, this gene here, I had, um, you know, the glycolysis pathway and all these other kind of things. And then every time I was in my kitchen cooking, because you're sometimes when you cook, you're sitting there for like 20 minutes just waiting on your food to get done. I would just stare at that wall. And that's how I got the information in. So the next craziest thing that I did um, in medical school was that when we had exams, I say for instance, our exams were at eight o'clock. Um, and we had like a nephrology exam and then the next day we would have a hematology exam. So what I used to do, which I looking back, I was like, man, that's crazy. Um, I used to wake up at like one or two o'clock in the morning and then be the first person in the library, um, 
on exam day to study and be in the library and just ready to take my exam. So I felt that I worked better under stress, uh, under uh, pressure actually. So I used to get a lot of information down that last few hours. So wake up at one o'clock in the morning or two o'clock and then be at the library by 2.30 or three o'clock and then study for four or five hours right before the exam so everything was fresh. And I know that's completely opposite of what most people kind of recommend that you do because, you know, you're tired, you know, you want to be on your best kind of um, in your state of mind during this time that you're taking this exam. But for me, I learned so much information during these four or five hours because it was a lot of pressure. And I was like, man, the exam's coming in a few hours. I got to get this down. And it stuck with me. So... I used to meet the janitor there, you know, when he was cleaning up, about to go home for the night, I was just, just walking into the door and then, you know, studying for a few hours. And I did that for pretty much majority of my exams in medical school. So looking back, I don't think that was, uh, you know, necessarily the right thing to do, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to make good grades in medical school and get into these top specialties. So. The next craziest thing that I remember doing in medical school to study and also make good grades was uh, write things out. Um, in medical school, you know, we had lectures, we had all of this information that we were supposed to know. And for me, my first like year or so, I figured, hey, in order for me to get this information into my brain, so I remember for a longer period of time, let me see if I can write it out and hopefully that will stick a little bit longer in my brain, maybe that would activate a different neural pathway and help me remember the information. I don't know what made me think of this, but I tried it. And in medical school, you try whatever it is that you can try. You try lots of things. If they don't work, you get rid of it. If they do, you stick with it. So what I used to do after a lecture, we had information that was given to us in terms of papers and uh, syllabus for each class. I used to take that syllabus and I would write out every single thing that was in that syllabus. So the professor said this aspect of, you know, pathology or cardiovascular heart disease, I would write it out, write it on a different piece of paper. And for me, that actually helped me because I, it, t it forced me to slow down and think about what I was writing so I can conceptualize it and possibly regurgitate it for, regurgitate it for an exam. So that's what I did. But uh, quickly I realized that uh, that was taking a long time to write out all that information. So I quickly got rid of that. The, the, the last thing that I did that I can remember in medical school that was uh, on the extreme side was listen to lectures while I was driving or when I was like on the metro or you know going to the gym, running on the treadmill and you know, people always talk about work-life balance and having this balance, but I didn't really c capture that. I was always about school, 24-7, whether I was out with friends or at a party, I was doing some flashcards or, or um, reviewing some notes from lecture or going to a party, going to the club or something like that, and I'm over here listening to a lecture audio. Uh, but I thought that was very helpful because you know, you, you're hearing the information from multiple different sources, from class, you know, reading videos that you may watch on YouTube or Google, and then you're hearing this lecture audio. So, uh, but it worked for me, and I actually still do listen to uh, lecture, lecture audios even to this day as a resident. So, those are some of the things that uh, I did that I can re recall that were pretty extreme or crazy during medical school, but it got me through those years. And when you get into medical school, whether it's nursing school or law school, or even, you know, um, PA school, you're gonna have to figure out what works best for you um, and figure out what you need to do to be successful. What are some of your extreme studying habits or stories or crazy story things that you have done while you're in college, high school, medical school, law school, dental school? Tell me about it. I want to hear from you guys. Put it in the comments below. Everyone else, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.